Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is explore how a changing radius of a cylinder can influence its volume. So let's go ahead and read this problem and see what we have to do. It says that we have to complete the table relating the radius and volume of cylinders with a height of 8 inches. Write each volume as a multiple of pi. Now, when they say write each volume as a multiple of pi, that just means that we have to solve in terms of pi, meaning we do not substitute pi with 3.14. We leave it as a symbol. All right, let us start with the formula that will give us the volume of a cylinder, which is equal to pi times radius squared times the height. Now, they want us to use these different inputs here for the radius, but they want us to continually use 8 inches for the height. So for the first cylinder, we are going to substitute for r 1, and we're going to square that, and multiply by a height of 8. Now, the radius squared, or 1 to the second power, is 1, and 1 times 8 is 8. So our answer is 8 pi. So in this output box here, let's just record that the volume is 8 pi. All right. Now for the next cylinder, we have a radius of 2. So what we're going to do is we are going to square the radius and then multiply that by a height of 8. And if we square 2, that gives us 4. And 4 times 8 is 32. So we would get a volume of 32 pi, which is our output when the input is 2. All right. And the next cylinder has a radius of 3. So we are going to square that radius and multiply by 8. And 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 8 is 72. So 72 pi cubic inches in this case is our volume. And the next example is a radius of 4. So we have to take 4 squared and multiply that by 8. So we have 16 times 8, which is 128 pi. And the next cylinder. Well, let's record this in our table, 128 pi. And the next cylinder has a radius of 5. So we have to square 5 and multiply by 8. And 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 8 is 200. So we have a volume of 200 pi when we have a radius of 5 and a height of 8. So 200 pi. And the last input that is shown in our table is 6. So we have to square 6 and multiply that by 8. And 6 squared is 36. And 36 times 8 is 288. So the volume is 288 pi. All right, now that we have figured out what our outputs are for all of the inputs, let's figure out what a changing radius actually does to our corresponding outputs. So let's take a look at a radius of 1 here. Now, if you were to take a radius of 1 and double it, the corresponding volumes become 4 times as large. And it doesn't matter what radius you double. Let's take 3, for instance, and double that to get to 6. The volume went from 72 pi to 288 pi, which is also 4 times as large. So when you end up doubling the radius, the resulting volume is going to be 4 times as large. Now, this is only going to occur, though, if you keep the height a fixed number. Okay. 
So let's take another number and double and see if this holds up. Let's go from two to four. If we go from two to four, which is doubling, we go from 32 to 128, which is four times larger. 128 is four times larger than 32. So what we can say then is if we have any radius, we plug in any radius, whatever that is, and we end up doubling that radius, what's going to happen is whatever the volume was before, let's just call that V, is going to end up becoming four times whatever it was. All right, let's see what happens if we take a radius, whatever that is, and let's say we triple that radius. So let's start with number one and let's triple it. Let's go to three and look at the corresponding outputs. We went from eight to 72, which is nine times as large. So our volume ended up becoming nine times what the previous volume was. We went from whatever the volume was to nine of those volumes. So let's see if that holds up if we triple something else. Let's go to two in our chart and let us triple that by going to six. All right, that is three times as large. And the corresponding outputs were 32 pi and 288 pi. Let's see if that is nine times as large. So I'm just gonna take 32 and quickly multiply by nine and we end up getting 288, which does confirm that tripling the radius will lead to a volume that is nine times as great. All right, let us check what would happen if we took our radius and we made it four times as large. Now, the only numbers I can work with on this table here would be one and four. I couldn't use any other number because it would be off of the chart. I mean, we could go ahead and, you know, list more numbers if we wanted to, but that's okay. Let's just compare one and four and see what happens. So if we make this four times larger, the corresponding outputs go from eight to 128, and that is 16 times larger. So our volume becomes 16 times of what the volume was. Now, what is going on every time in our equation is that when we put our input in, we keep squaring our input, all right? So let's think about that for a second. So we started off with one and we squared that, which of course gives us one. We squared two, which gives us four. We squared three, which gives us nine and so forth. Four squared is 16, five squared is 25. And then lastly, we squared six to get 36. Now, here's what that really means here. So let's say we doubled our radius, right? And we ended up getting a volume that's four times greater. Well, let's take a look at these numbers right here. So like if we went from a radius of one to two, look at what the difference is when you square. We went from an answer of one to four. And notice every single time we kept multiplying those answers by our heights of eight. All right. So what that really means is if we went from a radius of one to a radius of two, in one situation, we multiplied the radius, that result of squaring the radius by eight. And then if we were to double that radius, we ended up multiplying that result by eight as well, which gave us an eight and then a 32. So we can see before we even multiplied by eight that it was going to get four times bigger because look, we have a one here and we have a four here. And when we tripled something, right? We went from a given radius to three times the radius. We ended up getting a volume that's nine times as large. Well, let's take a look here. If we started with one and went to three, 
the result would be multiplying the height by 1 and then multiplying by 9. So when we ended up multiplying this 9 by 8, that gave us 72. So we went from a radius of 1 to a radius of 3. And that's going to mean that originally the height of 8 was multiplied by 1, which gives us 8, and then multiplied by 9, which gives us a volume of 72. And from 8 to 72 is 9 times bigger. But we can see it just by comparing this 1 and this 9. Now, when you want to compare tripling something, you don't have to look at just this 1 and just this 3 here. You can start with this 2 here and compare it to the 6 because that would be a radius that is 3 times bigger. And if we take a look at the result, that means the height of 8 would have been multiplied by 4 and by 36. And if we jump from 4 to 36, that is also 9 times as large. So here is exactly what is going on here. Whatever the radius is, if you were going to double something, the volume would get four times bigger because you take how many times bigger the radius is and you square it. And so you would say, oh yeah, the volume would be four times as large. Let's say you were tripling something, making it three times bigger. You just square that triple and you would get a result that's nine times larger than the original. So if you were to quadruple something and then square it, that would mean a volume that is 16 times larger than the original. And the pattern continues. If you made a radius five times larger than the original, then the volume would be 25 times larger because you are squaring how many times bigger the radius actually got. All right, so basically what we're saying here is let's say you had a container and that container had a height of eight and all you did was change the radius, the resulting change in volume would be the square of how many times bigger you increased that radius. So if you made your radius six times as large, then the corresponding volume would become 36 times as large. So there is a function going on here. Volume as a function of radius change is an exponential function. Because these inputs here are continually squared. So that's really the clue to let us know that we are dealing with an exponential function here. And now we know by whatever factor we increase the radius, we know that the changing volume is going to be a square of that factor. So if it became a factor of 3 bigger, then the volume is going to become 9 larger and so forth. And what is important to note here is that in order for you to actually explore or examine how a changing radius would affect the volume, you had to keep the height of fixed height. The height could not change in this case in order for us to study how a changing radius would actually influence the output or the volume. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.